Let's take a look at how to build your very own floating faucet. A cool optical illusion that makes it look like a faucet head is floating on a stream of water. We got a comment request from Menachim Robini, and I'm almost certainly pronouncing that incorrectly, but it was asking if we could please make a magic slash floating faucet. Yes, we can, and we're gonna show you how to do it. Here's what I was thinking. A clear plastic tube will lead from a small pump up to our faucet above. The water flowing down out of the faucet should cover the tube, giving the illusion that the water itself is holding the faucet up. To get started, we're going to need a small submersible water pump, a spigot or faucet. I prefer the kind that looks like it's a garden hose attachment. Some one half inch outer diameter clear tube. This is rigid tube, not flexible vinyl. This one's acrylic. You might be able to find it in polycarbonate as well. And a bucket or any other waterproof container that's about the right size and shape and matches the look that you want for your fountain. Now my bucket is also full of these clear glass beads. And I'm using these because I like the look of it. There's other things you can use. If you wanna use just natural rocks, you can do that. It looks good in all sorts of different colors. I do have a reason I'm using the clear glass and I'll get to that later, but there's lots of options like I was saying. Our pump is gonna end up going down inside of this bucket, but we don't want our cord coming up over the edge. So like we did with our small vortex fountain, we're going to drill a small hole into the bucket. We're going to cut our cord and then solder it back together once we've run it through the bucket. For this cord, we're going to solder one of the sides together, but the other side we're going to leave unattached because we want to add an inline switch that lets us turn the pump on and off without unplugging it. Now let's trim off the extra cords so it gets divided. This little piece of plastic is designed to keep the two pieces separate. This other side that we poke on top of that has prongs on both sides, and these are designed to stab through the rubber of the cord and make a connection between the two sides. Now we've got our pump inside of our bucket, the cord comes out to the outside, and eventually we are going to stop that hole up entirely. We're gonna use some hot glue for that, but it's not time to do that quite yet because we don't want to limit the movement on the pump. So let's grab our one half inch outer diameter acrylic tube and let's figure out the length that we need. Faucet's gonna be somewhere up here. We can fit this down. Now the pump I'm using, it actually fits perfectly over the nozzle that comes with the pump. It kind of snaps into place even. It's a watertight seal. It's just what we're looking for. So we have to figure out how high we want our spigot to go. I mean, if we put it up too high, then the pump's not gonna have enough power to really get the water all the way up there. If we put it too low, it's not really gonna look very cool. So we're just going for a few inches above the bucket. Now we're gonna use a hacksaw to carefully cut that off. Our tube cut, but acrylic is pretty fragile stuff and right at the end it did crack just a little bit. We're gonna use a belt sander to just smooth that off, give us a nice clean edge that doesn't have any ridges in it like that. There's the edge of the tube and we're gonna to want to glue that right down into the middle of the spigot. But once we've glued it down, it's gonna be sealing off a lot of the opening and we want water to be able to come out of the top and sort of pour back down like it was coming out of the spigot itself. So what we need to do now is drill some small holes in the top of the tube. We've got quite a small drill bit here and we're now going to drill eight holes into the top of this tube and we're gonna try and make it really close to the top, maybe only an eighth of an inch away. Of course, since we do want all the holes spaced evenly directly across from each other, we're gonna drill right down through one side and then out the other. Running a little bit of sandpaper over the top helps remove any burrs and it roughs up the plastic just a little bit to help the glue bond to it. Now we need to attach this onto our faucet and to do that, we're gonna be using some two-part epoxy. This is JB Weld, the quick version of it that takes five to six minutes to cure instead of four or five hours. 
You don't have to use this kind of glue. Other strong types of glue should work as well. But I like this stuff because it is designed to bond really well to metal. want glue to get about as high as it can get without reaching the holes. That'll help it grip a lot better. The epoxy is cured, which means the faucet is now holding itself onto the acrylic tube without any assistance. Doesn't fall off, not really wiggling, just what we want. So now we need to attach this onto our pump. And as I was saying before, this size of acrylic tube, this is half inch outer diameter tube, actually fits just perfectly onto the nozzle that came with this particular pump, which is pretty convenient. Now I'm holding the pump, but I'm not touching the tube or the faucet itself. And as you can see, it stays up right where we want it. One other thing that we want to do before we add all of our stones back in is I have this battery powered waterproof LED light. This thing's pretty nifty. It's controlled by a remote control and you can just change the colors. It's not gonna be hurt by being underwater and it is battery powered so you don't need any sort of cord running to it. We're actually gonna take this light and put it underneath our pump. So it's just resting on the bottom of our bucket and the pump is gonna sit on top of it. Now that we have that there, we can see how much of our cord we need for it to be able to reach. So at this point we can take some hot glue and seal off the hole where the cord is running out. With the hot glue seal in place, we can now put the light down at the bottom of the bucket, the pump on top of the light, attach our pipe and faucet on top of the pump, and then start piling the stones in because that's what's gonna hold everything in place. Now let's add some water. How much water you add is kind of up to you. I like to bring it up to just below the surface of the stones. Random fact, a leaky faucet that drips at the rate of one drip per second can waste more than 3,000 gallons a year, which is equal to like 180 showers. Okay, we've got our bucket plugged in. Let's turn it on and see how this goes. Now, ideally the water will come up out the holes in the top of the pipes and distribute themselves around the sides. Sometimes I've found that the water kind of doesn't stick very well to the pipe and you kind of need to just touch it to get it start flowing everywhere. Let's see what we can get. Ooh, didn't need much encouragement at all. Perfect, that means we did a pretty good job of lining everything up so the water is being distributed evenly all around. And look at this, we've now got water flowing out of the faucet and that's what's holding the faucet up in the first place. That's, <laughs> it's a really cool like just illusion it makes it look like, oh, the water is holding the spigot up. Very fun to look at. One of the main reasons I like using these glass stones is that the signal from my remote control has an easier time getting down into the bucket, so I can turn it on. Now it's really hard to see in this bright daylight. Let's take it somewhere a little bit more visible. One more small modification we can make is to take some very fine grit sandpaper and lightly, gently sand the tube from top to bottom. This should leave some very light white marks on the outside, which can help enhance the illusion of flowing water. It's not a major difference, but you may decide you like that look a little bit better. Once again, I'm sure I'm saying this wrong, but Mina Chem Rodini, thank you for your suggestion. This is a fun build, a fun project, and it's definitely something that you can do at home. It doesn't take too long and it doesn't cost that much. Check the links in the description for where to buy some of these pieces online. Mr. Rodini, check your YouTube inbox. We're gonna be sending you 25 bucks. Guys, remember, if you've got any cool ideas of things you wanna see us do, let us know down in the comments. And if we use your idea to make a video, we'll send you $25. Mmm, hose water. <laughs> Guys, it is subscriber appreciation giveaway time. We've got this cool King of Random snapback hat and we're going to be giving it away to one lucky fan. 
All you have to do to enter is first, be subscribed to the channel, and second, make a post on Instagram showing a picture or video of a King of Random project that you have done and tag us with hashtag the King of Random. We'll go through the post on Instagram and choose a winner to receive this hat. We're gonna be doing more of these giveaways going forward, so keep watching for more chances to win cool stuff. We'll have hats, we'll have cool merch, and we may have some larger ticket items, hopefully some cool electronics, games, cameras. We'll see. Guys, that's not the end. We've got more for you to see. The box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video. You should go check that out. The box at the bottom will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you are not a subscriber to our channel yet, hit the bomb in the middle to become one. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.